Hi guys, it's Quinn here. If you enjoy my videos, consider hitting the like button. It's the only way the YouTube algorithm really notices me. If you'd like to do more to keep this channel afloat, consider donating through the PayPal link in the description or checking out our Patreon. Thanks guys so much. In this video, we're going to be exploring some of the greatest mysteries of the Dune universe. These are questions that either don't have exact answers or the answers are vague enough that some degree of speculation is required to fill in the blank. Now, if you're familiar at all with Dune, then you know that it is one of the most dense science fiction series out there and can be challenging to read, let alone comprehend, for a lot of people. Frank Herbert is also pretty subtle with how he unveils certain details, so lots of things are easily missed. Now, essentially all of the mysteries that I'll be going over in this video I've already covered before in more detail in dedicated videos. You can find those videos linked in the description. The first question is, where do the worms come from? Now, this is a multi-part question. One, what is the life cycle of the worms? Two, how did the worms get on Arrakis? The answer to that first part of the question is relatively well established if you read the original six Frank Herbert books. There are tiny organisms in the sand known as sand trout. These organisms collect and insist water. They burrow themselves deep beneath the ground. They link themselves together and a chemical reaction eventually occurs. This chemical reaction results in an explosion on the surface known as a spice blow. This spice blow produces the substance known as spice melange. The surviving sand trout then burrow deep into the sand, linking together once again. These linked together sand trout will eventually become full-fledged sandworms and rise yet again. This process takes years. Now, the second question, in my opinion, is a lot more interesting, and we kind of learn the answer to this in the third book in the series, Children of Doom. The sandworms are not originally from Arrakis. They did not evolve there. And they are the reason, in fact, that the planet itself is a desert. Before the presence of the sandworms, Arrakis had been a wet world. In the book Children of Dune, the son of Paul Atreides, Leto II, comes to the realization that the sandworms had been brought to Arrakis from some distant world, likely by humans. He comes to this realization through use of his genetic memory. The most interesting part about this fact is its implication. If the worms were brought to Arrakis from some other world, where is that world? Because it is likely that it is another source of the spice melange. So the next biggest mystery that we have is what happened to the planet Earth. Yes, Earth is mentioned in the Dune series. It's mostly referred to as Old Earth. An interesting thing that Frank Herbert does in the Dune series, which I've seen done in several different science fiction series since, is set his universe so far into the future that humans have kind of forgotten about Earth. And in fact, most people, if they even know of Earth, aren't even sure if it's a myth or not. Groups like the Bene Gesserit remember Old Earth, but it's implied to be pretty obscure to average people. It's also implied in the book God Emperor of Dune that Earth no longer exists. It could be because it was destroyed through war or through other means. One of the themes of the Dune Saga as a whole is nothing is permanent and everything changes. Death is something that eventually comes for everyone and everything, even worlds. The next question, who destroyed the Honored Matre civilization? Now if you aren't familiar with the entire Dune Saga, I'll just explain that at a certain point, many 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 people left the old Imperium. Some of those people came back. 1500 years later. The most powerful of those groups were the Honored Matres. The Honored Matres were descended from remnants of the Bene Gesserit, of Leto II, the God Emperor's fish speaker army, and of the Tleilaxu Axolotl tanks. The Honored Matre had many of the Bene Gesserit powers, but they had lost several of them as well. For instance, they did not have the internal control that the Bene Gesserit had. They could not manipulate their internal body chemistry. The strange thing about this mystery is that the Dune canon somewhat contradicts itself on this, and this is due to the fact 
that the first six Dune books were written by Frank Herbert, and the last two were written much later by his son and Kevin J. Anderson. In the original books, the Honored Matres mention a mysterious group known as the Ones of Many Faces. This group supposedly laid waste to their empire, forcing them to flee back into the old empire, seeking Bene Gesserit techniques. The Ones of Many Faces are implied pretty heavily to be the remnants of Tleilaxu face dancers who had freed themselves from their masters and evolved into a highly advanced race of their own. The Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson books change this, but they do however leave in one element that I think would have been present in the final Frank Herbert book should he have had the chance to write it. So in the Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson books as we have talked about on this channel before, the beings that we thought were face dancers turn out to actually be robotic intelligences hell-bent on the destruction of mankind. Within the scattering, they released the Scourge upon the Honored Matres. The Scourge was a biological weapon. Because the Honored Matres lacked the Bene Gesserit ability of internal chemistry control, they couldn't fight this off. The concept of AI intelligence, hell-bent on the destruction of humankind, doesn't necessarily strike me as something that Frank Herbert would have written, but the idea of the Scourge does. And it fully explains why the Honored Matres would have come back into the Old Empire seeking those Bene Gesserit techniques. So depending on which canon you buy into, the Honored Matres either faced off against the Ones of Many Faces, who appear to be face dancers, or they faced off against machine intelligence left over from the Butlerian Jihad. You decide what you want to believe. Okay, and the final question. Who was Leto's great enemy? Now, the original six Frank Herbert books don't actually mention the term Great Enemy. That's a term that's found later in Brian Herbert's books. But they do mention that there is a great destructive force headed for humanity. Leto is there to delay the coming of this force until humanity is prepared to survive it. It's also mentioned in God Emperor of Dune that if Leto II hadn't done what he did, becoming the Worm God Emperor, then humankind would have already been destroyed by the time that book takes place. So based on the text, Leto's great enemy was a kind of hunter-seeker device, like the device we see in the first Dune book, only much more advanced. So advanced, in fact, that it replicates itself and has a form of prescience. This hunter-seeker device would hunt down and kill every human being in the universe. This is a device that would have been of Ixian design. So at the core of this is commentary on the exponential progression of technology and how that sometimes gets out of hand. In the Brian Herbert books, the great enemy again refers to AI intelligence left over from the Butlerian Jihad. So this is very different from what Frank Herbert had in mind, which was a not sentient but powerful man-made machine that wasn't operating based off of a grudge, some kind of hatred of humanity which seems more like a human emotion than something that a powerful AI intelligence would have, but instead was simply operating based off of the ultimate extrapolation of commands that it was given. But again, like with the question of who destroyed the Honored Matre civilization, the answer to this question shifts on which canon you take the most seriously. Alright guys, that's it for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure you like the video and subscribe for more Quinn's ideas. Also consider donating to keep this channel afloat by clicking the paypal.me link or checking us out on Patreon. Thanks guys.